times I've taught a study here, a teaching here one time on you when in trouble, remember your eights. That's an old saying from down south. When in trouble, remember your eights. Romans chapter 8 is what you want to remember. And then verse 8, 18, 28, and 38 are the verses in the chapter to remember. You remember those passages and they'll give you a, 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 uh, a, 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 an anchor, something to be an anchor for your soul, steadfast and sure, to get you through the problems of life. I want you to look at verse 18, Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that the suffering in this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Notice how Paul recognizes that there is a present time suffering and then there's a future glory to be revealed. Someone has said that creation, when God made, made creation in Genesis, he said it was good. When sin entered, groaning came on the scene. And then one day it's going to be glory. The glory, verse number 20, uh, uh, verse number 19, he says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. God has a liberation plan for creation. For we know, verse 22, now watch this, that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. What God's Word says, if you live, the Lord, tar the Lord tarries, and you live a natural life, you're going to groan and travail. There's going to be suffering and pain and ultimately death in your future. We know, we know from experience, we know because God's Word tells us that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain. Look around you. The songwriter said, change and decay, all about I see. Now you've got preachers that'll come along and tell you, yeah, but that won't be true of you if you're a believer. Because if you're a believer, God will come and He's going to heal you and He doesn't want you sick and God doesn't want you to be, to be uh, uh, you know, the health and wealth stuff. He doesn't want you to be sick. He doesn't want you to be in poverty. And so God will, once you trust Jesus, God will work in your behalf and get rid of that. You know what that is? That's balderdash. Somebody needs to get on a program like this on a television and tell you that is just a bunch of hooey. Now that's Alabama talk, I understand, but you... I bet you understood it, didn't you? You know what it is? It's a lie out of the pit of hell is what it is. Because it takes people in desperate straits, reaches into the pool of their emotions, gets a grip on their heart, twists it, and just sucks out the life. And you know why preachers tell you that? They tell you that primarily to get your money. They tell you that primarily to get your support to get you on their team. And the money might not be dollar bills, it might just be your influence. But that's what they're after. How do I, why do I say that? Why would I come on here and make such a bold, arrogant sounding statement? I'm not trying to be arrogant. I am trying to talk to you plain, put it waist high right across the plate where you get it, I don't want you to think I'm saying the, thing, the same thing everybody else is saying because when you preach God's Word rightly divided, you aren't saying what religion is saying. And you aren't saying what the trumped up form of religi the religionized version of Christendom called Christendom is saying. Verse 23, watch it carefully. Romans 8, 22, We know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. That's believers. Filled with the Spirit of God. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves. Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. There is a healing program for the members of the church, the body of Christ today. It's called the adoption. It's called the resurrection. It's called the moment when Jesus Christ comes and changes your mortal body, your vile body, and fashions it like in his glorious body. Now until the moment of the resurrection, change and decay and all about you can expect to see. You know why you get physically ill? You know why physical sickness comes into your life? It's not because God is mad at you. 
It's, be, it's not because God doesn't have you on his heart. It's not because God hasn't prepared anything for you. It's because we live in a fallen creation. Okay, I want to do another quick little video here showing this uh, little obnoxious spoiled brat, false prophet, uh, screaming at his congregation. Uh, this is not the way a mature pastor would act. A mature pastor um, is supposed to be an example to his flock. He's supposed to care for them. And I'm just going to show you here a little bit of this. And also watch how he treats his Bible. Did you bother to read it before you handed it out? Did you read it first before you handed it out? Probably not. And I can guess why. Because the same kind of person who's too lazy to read the back of the church track is the same kind of person who's too lazy to read their Bible cover to cover. Well, why don't you suck your thumb and, you know, hold your little blankie too while you're at it. Maybe hold your breath and... You know, throw a little temper tantrum. I mean, what a child. What a novice. And it's the same kind of people who want to go by what somebody says instead of what this book says. And listen to me. This church has always stood for the same thing and it came out of this book right here. Uh, is that how a man with the Holy Spirit in him would treat the Holy Word of God? When the Bible says that uh, God's word is, is exalted above his name. Is this how you treat your, God's holy word? You slam it and you hit it with your hand? And let me tell you something, buddy. You better read this book and you better read the track and you better know what you're doing. You say, why are you so mad? Let me tell you why I'm so mad. Because I'm sick and tired of... Because I didn't uh, get a nap this afternoon. That's why I'm so mad what Faithful Word Baptist Church is turning into. Whoa, I'm sick and tired of what Faithful Word Baptist Church is turning into. Well, whose fault would that be? The shepherd of the flock? If a church falls apart, it's the pastor's fault. He's condemning himself here. He's too stupid to even realize it. This is a great church. This is the best church I've ever been to. Oh, boy, a prideful statement. This is the best church I've ever been to. <laughs> oh, okay. And I don't like what it's turning into, because I'll tell you what it's turning into. It's turning into a bunch of people who don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I, I, gee, I wonder why that would be. Maybe because you're the pastor of it? Let me just give you some scripture here real quick to show you what a pastor is supposed to be according to the Word of God. It says here in 1 Timothy 3.1, This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, Bible word for pastor there, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober. Is this being sober that we're watching there, this attitude of Steve Anderson? I don't think so. How about of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach? Steve Anderson couldn't teach the Bible to save his life. Not given to wine, no striker. That's supposed to be violent. Not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, you know, kind of like uh, going to the secular world to sell your video, you know. Let me show you another verse here in 2 Timothy. Paul, by the way, the, ver the books of First and Second Timothy, Paul is writing to a young preacher, the young preacher Timothy. And here he's giving instructions to Timothy. 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Disobeyed by Steve Anderson. He does not rightly divide the word of truth. He refuses to. He's not a real preacher. But look down here. Verse 24, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. Huh? Gentle? Hmm. Apt to teach patient, there we see it again, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledge, acknowledging of the truth. Meekness. 
You don't need to yell and scream at your congregation if you are a pastor. You are supposed to be calm and collected and in control of yourself. First Peter chapter 5 the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. You watch over them. You protect your flock. You don't scream at them and threaten them and, and belittle them and kick the pulpit and throw a little temper tantrum. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind neither as being lords over God's heritage, like uh, kind of like Steve Anderson, but look at this, but being unsamples to the flock. Well, if uh, Steve Anderson is an ensample to the flock, then I guess then his flock should go around and kick pulpits and throw things on the floor and go into belligerent little tantrums. Okay, but watch this one. This is even better yet. Check this one out. Hey, why do you think this country elected a devil like Barack Obama? Why? Because the news media crammed him down our throat. He's a devil. I'm hey, sorry. you know what? Get the hell out of here if you don't like this kind of thing. Well, get, get the H out of here? I'm not even going to say it. Use his profanity? Because, you know, Barack Obama's a devil. Barack Obama's a partial birth abortion. If you don't like to hear the truth, then get the hell out of my church. Oh, my church. Oh, you know, wow. Okay. Neither is being lords over God's heritage. Oh, it's my church. It's my church. And, and and here he says it's falling apart and there's problems. You know, what an admission of guilt. This isn't a real pastor here. A real pastor does not need, need to scream and berate his congregation and yell at them. A real preacher is going to be a servant to the congregation. He's going to rule with love and teaching and instruction in the Word of God and charity. Yeah, you can yell and stuff, but yell at sin. Yell and rebuke sin. Rebuke the world. You don't need to scream at your congregation and throw this little temper tantrum where you're you're hitting the Bible and throwing the Bible around and you know, I mean, it's just so crazy. This isn't a real preacher. This is a novice, a child, a false prophet where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law which is the word of God the Lord happy is he Jeremiah 23 verse 16 to 20 thus saith the Lord of hosts hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you they make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord, and has perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. Jesus Christ did not die on a cross. He did not take the stripes on his back. He did not take a crown on his head. His side was not pierced that we may drive Rolls Royces and buy $12,000 dogs and live in $40 million homes. But he died on a cross to save mankind from the power of sin and the grip of...